very warm greetings everyone welcome to the series lecture series based on the book living in truth the gandhian paradigm this lecture is lecture number 5 titled as gandhi's ecological revolution the book is published by rupa publications and authored by ramin jahanbiglo and pooja sharma you can go to the front page of the book this is the full cover of the uh, of the book cover page these are the authors and this is these are the chapters we have been talking about the introduction of gandhian paradigm and in the uh, rest of the lectures we talked about the chapter uh, chapter 1 which is gandhi's moral revolution gandhi's political revolution gandhi's economic revolution and today we are going to talk about gandhi's ecological revolution the gandhian paradigm gandhi's rel- relevance to india and the whole world has is greater than ever before i take this opportunity to introduce the fundamental essence of this book gandhi did not consider freedom as a mere pursuit of selfish aim at the expense of others his unique understanding of human life and fundamentals as it has they have the revolutionizing concepts of moral and ethical values which leads to political economic and ecological revolutions later so the book has uh, compiled all the uh, types of dimensions of revolution moral revolution political revolution economic revolution and ecological revolution gandhi's ecological revolution Gandhi and economic revolution we have seen in the last earlier lecture that it is guided by an evolved consciousness that realizes the truth of existence and therefore seeks the ultimate satisfaction guided by empathy and law of non-possession its ultimate aim is to build a society devoid of concentration of power competition warfare and unrest originating from the evolved consciousness humans can connect to each other and their existence and along with nature they can connect to nature the unique this partic- this unique feature of empathy and inclusivity gandhian thought is not limited to human kind it extends its horizons to other living creatures and environment gandhi's idea of persistence of that concerns to other refers to nature spiritual harmony equilibrium between the human kind and ecology our material desires and wants they definitely accentuate and accelerate the economic growth and in turn economic growth has a detrimental impact on the environment leading to environment climate change this particular dilemma of human activity and and pursuing the uh, harm to the natural resources has persisted ever since the human civilization gandhian ideology in this context the ideology of truth and love is not limited to individual of upliftment and enhancement it augments otherness of other the interconnectedness of human kind with ecology it is the phenomena of transformation and the whole phenomena of transformation is con- considered as three primary connectedness and the, uh, the three basic primary connectedness which we are talk about under transformation the first is transformation of connection with oneself that is this constitutes the foundation of overall gandhian paradigm Gandhian ethical and moral philosophy urges it evolves on the humanity to explore it urges the humanity to explore within themselves go deeper within themselves and look in words for the knowledge of truth and non-violence and love once this enlightenment of truth occurs it manifests change or change or transformation within themselves or of an individual this is referred to as gandhian moral par- paradigm which we've already discussed the gandhian moral paradigm can never overlook the other 
because the realization of morality is never devoid or without empathy. Consequently, the second transformation manifests, that is, changing the relationship with other beings re regarding love, respect and tolerance. This stage of transformation brings about a change in socio-economic political systems existing on, among the community, society, human interaction, etc. at regional level, local level, international level. Therefore, the significance of cooperation and collective effort envisages and sets in and a non-violent peaceful social order is embodied as a result. This was the second transformation. Now, the third transformation is the relationship between the humans and non-human entities. Moral and ethical commitment of Gandhian paradigm does not cease at human to human connectedness, but it extends to interconnectedness between human and non-human. This leads to the third transformation which we which which refers to which refers to the ecological revolution. The ethical and moral responsibility of human existence encourages humans to preserve nature, which is consisting of both transient and permanent entities and elements. For visualizing transformation of connection of humans and nature ecology, the spiritual knowledge of truth and nonviolence should commence. It is only then that the attributes of empathy, love, respect, they originate in the entire creation. Gandhi's moral and ethical revolution manifested non-violence and embodied eternal values of life in his thoughts and action. He advocated eternal sacredness of life that comprises of trees, plants, um, uh, animals, cow, everything around, ecosystem around. This is a unique re realization. And this, and he contented the greatness of the nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way the nation treats animals. He always quoted the example of primitive man, who was more compatible and compatible with nature and, and the other species living around. He believed that the immense power of ahimsa and littleness of man can be considered as, for humanity a noble attribute of the soul. The world began to realize the challenge of sustainability very late. But he had already quoted 100 years back the notion of sustainability and the crisis and the challenge of climate change. Meeting the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their needs. The notion of sustainability. Later, the sustainable development goals, they emerged and enabling human beings to fulfill their aspiration and reach their full potential over the sustained period. Gradually, the component of sustainable development goals, that is SDGs, they came up to incorporated into the Millennium Development Goals MDGs to promote peaceful, inclusive societies which are for the sustainable development. This happened very late. The aim was to provide access and justice to all, build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. SDGs were born in UN United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development in Rio in 2012 and at the same time mid-2000 ESG's concept also emerged that is environmental social governance that reinforced the need for conscious and shared responsibility of environment and ethics by all economic stakeholders. So that was a realization of conscious and shared responsibility. Gandhi's ecological revolution 
evolved it ha it already incorporates esgs and notion of sdgs the evolution of esg component exhibited the rising consciousness and responsibility produce of the producing sectors which are giving challenge to environment in order to combat environmental challenges and the notion of ethical consumption was put across with the growing concerns about the ethical status of, of quoted companies these standards became the central factor that measure the ethical impact and sustainability of investment in a company it was gradually the it was realized in the system of producing companies that how ethical the investment would be in context of environment it is crucial to mention that gandhi economics model they had already address all the aspects of esgs and sdgs long time back gandhi in his writings of uh, hind swaraj in 1909 that 1909 already warned the world of the dangers of environment destruction which the world is going to face which is facing in the present era the gandhian thoughts revolutionizes the issues of climate change advocating environmental sustainable sustainable ways of living that sustains ethical balance and that creates an ethical balance between the material needs of the humans and their responsibility towards ecology and environment he coined the term sarvodaya to reflect universal upliftment or progress of all gandhi conceived this term and this term was also inspired by john ruskin's notion of political economy on to this last notion of sarvodaya is based on three basic principles firstly the good of individual is contained in the good of all secondly every individual has the same right to earn a livelihood by working finally the life of a labor such as the life of a tiller of the soil is worth living so these three primary notion and uh, 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 aspects were key and fundamental to sarvodaya notion the concept of sarvodaya stands for progress of all based on equality and liberty it is an agency of service for hum for the common welfare of humans based on non possession a concept that is also incorporated in trusteeship model which we have earlier done in uh, in our lecture last lecture of ecological revolution the essence of uh, environmental ethics was advocated through the notion of sarvodaya gandhi's vision of sarvodaya implied preserving the harmonious existence of human kind with nature and other beings against this drop backdrop one of the remarkable movement that started uh, 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 with a very lot of rigor and strength was bhutan andolan that was driven by acharya vinoba bhave initiated as bhutan movement and that started and originated at ponchapalli in 1951 this movement motivated the wealthy landlords by inculcating the change in heart change of heart quote and quote this was driven by the notion of change of heart that in that and imbibing the essence of compassion and a sense of common resource sharing among the privileged uh and resourceful people gandhi and identified certain prerequisites for non exploitative non violent economic order that that would result into economic and environmental sustainability first and foremost was there should be a society that sanctifies greed because greed is the cause of inequality exploitation jealousy and conflict gandhi content gandhi ji contended that interdependence between the humans and in the human society is inevitable 
this interdependence must be based must be based on altruistic values he was for the he was he pr- propagated the notion of interconnectedness among the humans and this there has to be an interdependence however this interdependence must be in based on the altruistic values not on the self interest and materialistic values only then can the aparigraha or abstinence from acquisitiveness of people be practiced this interdependence and cooperation calls for immeasurable love for each other this can happen only with the existence or prevalence of absolute love for each other later the interdependence and cooperation would result into respect for each other and the sole aim of the cooperation and connectivity among humans would be uh, would lead to the nature connectivity and it will finally lead to preserve the harmony between nature and humans with love and non-violence according to gandhi all spiritual laws were applicable not only in thoughts but in practice in day to day life in other words the true essence of spirituality is embedded in our daily activities the same is true with the concept of swadeshi one needs to be self sufficient for that one must deploy and utilize the available resources around and ensure the employment in the localized area and set up in the community it further implies protecting one's own resources and ensuring the availability to all belong belonging to all the deprived people harmonizing an availability of local resources among all individuals belonging to a particular uh, lo- locality is the first step forward spiritual connectivity among the humanity and humans will lead to connectivity with with the nature around various ecological scientists and economists have asserted the need to revisit the harmony between humans and nature famous economist or ecological economist uh, uh, harman e daly criticized and analyzed the existence of steady state later stern concluded that economic growth would never result in the improved environmental quality that is the that is the uh, the environmental kuznets curve was was invalidated in 1995 the study also concluded that the economic growth is not the panacea for environmental quality and there were many economists and ecologists who have uh, one of the remarkable book the limits of growth limits to growth also claimed that environmental there are environmental limits for growing unprecedentedly and therefore it predicted the collapse of the whole world economic system in the middle of 21st century and later the economic growth will tend to cease it will result into population excessive population industrialization pollution food production rate of depletion of non uh, rate of depletion of the non renewable resources etc it was later demonstrated that in the long run the over exploitation of resources will become the source of disaster projections also reveal that the limits to economic growth owing to the limits to growth of material throughput to the world will destroy the economic system in 1973 a norwegian philosopher arne nyes coined the term deep ecology deep ecology which is based on the concept of gandhian thoughts perception that all living beings have value independent of their usefulness to other living beings nice nice inspired by gandhi 
on the notion that all work is essential and rather every work is in the form is a form of self realization it was stated technique for achieving the power of non violence is belief that the essential oneness of all life that was asserted by gandhi so the feeling of essential unity overrides all the differences and makes them appear superficial nice was highly influenced by gandhian formulation of non violence based on advaitic unity of existence i believe in the essential unity of man and for that matter of all lives therefore gandhi ji said i believe that if one man gains spiritually the whole world gains with him and if one man fails then the whole world fails to that extent his notion of deep ecology dif- differed from the conventional idea of environmentalist who valued nature as being only usefulness for the human nature being useful only for the human purpose the concept of deep ecology is highly inspired and it recognizes the need to conserve resources for the use of all species not only human beings it prioritizes the health and well-being of it condemned the idea of prioritizing prioritizing the health and well-being of affluent nations altogether gandhi ji contended that i need no inspiration other than nature's she has never failed me as yet she mystifies me bewilders bewilder, me and sends me to the ecstasies gandhi ji viewed all the spheres of human life in an integrated manner some of the gandhian practices were the reflection of spiritual as well as ecological balance one of the example is by observing silence gandhi was communicating with his self inner self reaching out to higher energies this was a remarkable method adopted to conserve one's energy and such a practice complies with what we call in science as the first law of thermodynamics he reinforced his connection with ecology by preserving and conserving ecological balance through his novel idea of fasting which is practiced repeatedly in his life or again and again so we'll continue the discussion after a short break thank you so much